climbing back upon Mount Soapbox for another rant. And if you have a rant suggestion that I've yet to do, be it about gaming, YouTube, etc., feel free and send it my way, but be sure and check the rant playlist first, just in case I may have done it already. But if you did that, and turns out I haven't done that rant, and you think I should do it, feel free, let me know below in the comment section via Twitter, Facebook, our Discord, all of my social media linked below in the description section. Okay, so this uh, is going to get dangerously close to uh, political waters. And uh, on this channel, I try to avoid politics. On the vlogs channel, sometimes it happens. You know, last week's violence vlog, for example. And this is kind of, sort of, a continuation of that video. So if you haven't checked out my vlogs channel, I guess this is a nice plug for it. So there you go. IGN. Tax levy proposed for M-rated video games. Violent video game tax proposed by Rhode Island representative. A Rhode Island representative has proposed a raise in tax on M-rated video games to fund mental health provisions in schools. Let's see. Gamesindustry.biz reports that a Republican member of the Rhode Island State House, Robert uh, Nordillo, hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. If I'm not, I apologize, has plans to increase the tax on games with ratings of M are higher by 10%. The statement follows President Trump's recent comments that the power of violent video games and film, quote unquote, to shape young people's thoughts a week after the mass shooting back in Florida, where 17 people died in the horrific attack, continuing. There is evidence that children exposed to violent video games at a young age tend to act more aggressively than those who are not, Nardello said in a statement, although he didn't prove any sources substantiate his claim. The bill would give schools the additional resources needed to help students deal with the aggression in a positive way. See, gamesindustry.biz points out to the United States Secret Service's own research found that less than 20% of school shooters played violent video games. Quote-unquote, our goals is to make every school in Rhode Island a safe and calm place for students to learn, added Nerdello, who currently has a 93% approval rating from the NRA. Quote-unquote, by offering children resources to manage their aggression today, we can ensure a more peaceful tomorrow. Okay, so they did mention uh, the current president of the U.S., Trump. So what did he say exactly? Let's go to Daily Beast. By the way, the IGN Daily Beast articles are linked below in the description section. Quote, unquote, we have to look at the internet because a lot of bad things are happening to young kids and young minds and their minds are being formed, the president said. We have to do something about maybe what they're seeing and how they're seeing it and also video games. I'm hearing more and more people say the level of violence in video games is really shaping young people's thoughts, quote unquote. And then the president also pivoted to blaming Hollywood. We're going to stick with video games because obviously that's what this channel is all about. Like I said, both the articles link below in the description section. So where do we start? First off, let's uh, go with uh, President Trump. Mr. President I've been playing video games my whole life, and I've been playing uh, violent video games as well since uh, I was a kid. And uh, I have the opposite of aggression because of violent video games. And I've mentioned this in previous uh, videos. I think I did in the vlogs video last week for violence. Whenever I had a really bad day, a hard time at school or work, and I was just in a really bad mood, for whatever rhyme or reason, what I would do is I'd put in a, a game like uh, Grand Theft Auto 3 back in the day or Vice City or San Andreas and just you know carry all sorts of destruction and mayhem in a video game. And you know what happened? After I was done, I felt a lot better. No different than somebody putting on gloves and beating the crap out of a punching bag. Which is why I consider some violent video games like Grand Theft Auto, Red Dead Redemption, Saints Row for example, to be mental punching bags. A place for you to go, have fun, do all these random things that you normally cannot do in real life, obviously, and yes, even carry out acts of violence in a video game. And the majority of gamers, young and old, realize that it's a video game, Mr. President, that it's not real. For one thing, uh, when you die in a video game, you respawn, you come back to life, and when you die in real life, you sadly stay dead. 
I mean, unless reincarnation is a thing or, you know, there's life beyond death, but that's another issue entirely. We want to, you know, stay focused here. So I extremely disagree with our president. Well, <laughs> I do on a lot of things, but on this particular subject, yes, I definitely disagree. And I agree with the United States uh, Secret Service's research on this subject, which is also linked in the IGN article. If you want to go read that document yourself, it's kind of long and boring. But the point is, they said that less than 20% of school shooters play violent video games. That means that 80-something percent of school shooters don't play video games. Therefore, you cannot blame violent video games or you know kit friendly video games you cannot blame video games in general for the school shootings that have occurred sadly for the past several years and decades going i guess back to columbine even before columbine and after columbine you know to what happened in florida so you can take that off the table right now we can't blame violent video games because i believe that the majority of gamers out there like myself, understand the difference between reality and fantasy, like in Dead by Daylight, another violent game where you're playing four survivors versus a killer. And uh, anyone with any common sense knows that if you were to be put on one of those hooks or whacked by a sharp object by a killer, chances are you're not getting up. You're not going to be able to be pulled off the hook and just magically healed yourself by rubbing yourself or having one of your friends rub you down with a nice back rub and then you're going to be okay. Chances are you'll probably be dead. So another example of reality versus fantasy when it comes to the perception of violent games. Most people, I believe, that play video games understand that point. Now, regarding violence in general entertainment, this is nothing new. We've had violent video games. We've had violent TV shows. We've had violent movies and books, comics, graphic novels. Even as I pointed out in uh, my violence vlog, goes all the way back to plays. You know, written by some of the greats of our time, like William Shakespeare, you know, Julius Caesar, Macbeth, Richard III. This goes on and on. There's other plays out there that are pretty violent. I mean, they may not actually show violence happening, but it's very much implied. And history itself is, you know, littered with violent acts of history and war. And the fact that every year thousands of people are dying in wars across the world big wars small wars and yet you don't see governments trying to stop war war keeps happening war keeps brewing people keep fighting each other terrorism keeps happening but at the same time you know let's blame violent video games now back to the county i mean state of rhode island i'm sorry rhode island you're just so small but we we love you anyways uh rhode island okay so yes they want to uh have a uh, increase in taxes on games that are rated m or higher by 10 percent and allegedly that money is going to go to uh mental health in schools now this is the problem with taxes and look i am a tax paying citizen i don't mind paying taxes but a lot of times it really feels like that anytime they propose a tax for something nine times out of ten it doesn't go to that thing it goes to something else entirely as much as i would like for there to be more funds you know, put towards mental health provisions in schools to help kids that have issues that actually need to go talk to somebody and have those problems worked out, whether it's, you know, family issues or personal problems that they're going through. And look, I was a kid once, I had a ton of issues and I got in trouble a few times and I paid the price for some of the things I did. But at the same time, I learned my lesson from the mistakes that I made, which are small potatoes compared to you know, what some others have done, sadly. But the point is, I think that it's a good thing to have this on the table as an option to you know, get out there and say, look, if you're going through some problems, if you have issues, you need to seek help. Please seek help because you know monsters aren't just born overnight. You know, it happens through a series of unfortunate events, you know, that that eventually leads somebody down this path to do something so horrible and horrific like what transpired last week in Florida. So while I believe that, you know, we definitely need to look into the mental health aspect and, you know, as a gun owner, I do think that, you know, some people may not be mentally qualified to have the right to have a firearm in their possession 
especially those that have suicidal thoughts. Anyone that has serious mental problems, they don't need to have any guns. I mean, for one thing, chances are they may use it on themselves or they may use it on other people. And there's plenty of gun owners out there in America that are very responsible, myself included, who understand the dangers of a firearm and you know the purpose of self-defense. But unfortunately, you know the gun is a tool, just like a, a knife's a tool, just like a baseball bat's a tool. You can use it to play baseball, but you can also use it to bash somebody's head in. So what it comes down to, in my opinion, is that the focus needs to be on trying to help people. And at the same time, you know, bolster security in schools. But I don't see a uh, tax on M or higher rated video games as the answer. It does feel like to me that M rated video games are being singled out. I don't claim to have the answers to the problems going on in the world, especially when it comes to this issue. I don't have any of the answers here. But what I will say about violent video games is that, I mean, it's pretty damning that less than 20% of the uh, mass shooters in recent history play video games. It's also a fact that I pointed out that myself included, you know, being someone that's played video games since I was a kid, you know, as well as violent video games, we see the reality and we see fantasy. The fact that, you know, what happens in a movie is a movie. It's entertainment. What happens in a TV show? Same thing, entertainment. What happens in a video game? Also entertainment, not real. With a few exceptions, I think we can all say that the majority of the gaming community has that same point of view regarding violent video games and reality. So we want to blame violent video games. Okay, fine. Uh, let's uh, talk about why a violent video game caused the mass shooting in uh, Texas, August 1st. 1966, going to Wikipedia, University of Texas Tower Shooting. Now, this is a true story because my grandfather went to UT in Austin back in the day. I don't know if it was during this time period, but he told me the story some time ago. So it's legit. Lone gunman climbed up to the main building tower at the University of Texas at Austin and uh, over a 90-minute period shot and killed 14 people. Turns out uh, they found a tumor in his brain which was causing violent impulses. Mental issues were caused. Health and mental problems led to this man climbing up to a tower and ultimately killing 14 people. Guess what? In 1966, I don't seem to recall there being video games. I don't even think Pong was a thing back then. Maybe it was a violent board game or a violent card game that caused him to you know, go on this massive killing streak murdering 14 people. One of them was an unborn child, by the way. Or maybe, just maybe, I don't know. Maybe it's the same issue that we have today. Maybe it's simply a case of mental health issues. Just like with him, found a tumor in his brain during the autopsy. And chances are, I don't know. I mean, from what I read about the kid last week, it seems like he may have a, a few mental issues. So if we could stop blaming violent video games on you know, mass shootings when, you know, the evidence, you know, points to the contrary and start trying to focus on real reasons and causes why people end up, you know, going down that dark path and coming up with, I don't know, uh, solutions, ways to prevent future tragedies, whether, you know, it's, you know, some reasonable gun laws or, you know, the focus on more mental health checks for people, you know, encouraging more people to go get help or get looked at if they think that they're experiencing depression or, or problems in their lives. Maybe, you know, those might be better solutions than, you know, blaming violent video games. Because, once again, that's fantasy. That's entertainment. That's not real. But what happened in Florida was very real.